So now we know how to rotoscope and create mats. If not, check my previous videos and then come back. Now, there is a better way and faster way than rotoscoping to create mats and remove the background. Only if the scene allows it though, if the settings of the scenes are favorable. Or if the set is prepared beforehand by using the blue or green screen on the filming location. And that technique is called keying or chroma key. But before we continue, first we need to understand the process of keying itself. In order to make it easy to understand, I will begin with the luma key effect. Now as we know, luma is brightness. If in this scene there is a strong contrast in brightness between the background and the subject, we can use that to our advantage in order to remove either the dark area or the bright area in the scene. Now let me show you an example. Here we have a scene with the trees against the white clear background sky. The sky is 100% white. If we check it under the info panel, you will see that next to the RGB the number is 1, which is 100% white. If you go and navigate the cursor on the trees, you will see that it is close to 0, which is black. So there's a contrast between the subject and the background. In this case, we will get rid of the bright sky, go to effects and choose the luma key effect and apply it to the image and under the drop down menu next to the key type, select key on brighter. You don't see anything because threshold is zero, bring it back to maximum 255 and then slowly lower it back until you see the background being removed. If you toggle the transparency grid, you will see that it is transparent there. Now, it is very helpful if the new background that you are going to put behind the trees has got the similar color to the old background that was shot. Therefore, these white edges will mix with the new background and be seamless. We can also adjust the edge thin, which evenly shrinks the edges all around the subject. Alternatively, you can apply a choker effect and shrink the edges that way. Then adjust the feather edge to make a smoother transition between the background and the foreground. Now, if you have a different sky, like a black sky or maybe a red sky, you will have to remove the rest of the white edges on the trees by lowering down the threshold even further. And unfortunately, if the footage is not sharp enough, is blurry, has got changes in color or brightness, or else, you might end up losing some good bits of trees as well, which to be fixed will require an additional techniques or alternative solutions. Now, let's go back to the good keyed out sky. I will show you another effect, which is similar to Luma key, but it's different, it's called extract. It serves the same purpose, but it represents the brightness levels here. As you can see, this high peak of the whites is the 100% white of the sky. So if you go past it, by dragging this top square to the left, it will remove that brightest area of the sky. And you can go even further before you reach the gray tones. By pulling the bottom square, you adjust the feather edge and smoothness of the transition. Now we have a good replaced sky. In cases where the luma key cannot be applied, because of the absence of the strong contrast in brightness, another option would be to use is a color key effect, which allows you to remove the assigned color in this scene. Now this effect works well where the object that we're trying to remove contains the opposite color of the environment it is in. Like in this case, a red balloon against the green forest environment. Now to show you visually the contrast between those colors, let's go and click this icon of three colorful balls and choose red. Therefore, we will see highlighted red colored areas in the shot. In this case, you see that the most red is in the balloon, as as well as in those flowers. If you check the green color, you will see that most of the environment, the forest, the leaves are green. And the blue color is kind of even in the whole image there. If you don't know what I'm talking here about, I advise you to go to my channel and check the video that is called Everything You Need To Know About Alpha Channel, where I show you how the colors are viewed and represented in grayscale. So in this case, there is a strong contrast between red and green, which is helpful for us to remove one or another. In this case, we're going to remove the red balloon. To do that, you need to select the color key effect and apply it. First, you need to choose the color you want to remove, then adjust the tolerance in order to remove the red tones in between, and stop before you start to remove too much of the color in other areas beyond the subject. Then let's duplicate the effect and select another tone of red, here on the bottom, and adjust the color tolerance, and remove most of it. Also add some feathering there. And here you go, we have a transparent red balloon. In order to test if our key is clean, it is a good idea to put a different color behind the layer and that way search for imperfections. Now let's bring back the image to its original, remove the blue background. I'll show you another effect which is called linear color key. It is similar to the color key but it allows you to remove several tones at once in one effect. Let's select the first tone of red and before selecting the next tone, choose chroma under the drop down menu next to the match color and adjust the matching softness accordingly in order to only remove the part of the balloon that we need to select the additional tones of that red color, you have to click on the eyedropper with the plus sign next to it and choose the next visible tone of red on the balloon and it matches the tolerance accordingly. Now let's bring back the blue background again and test the results of our chroma key. 
There is also a better effect called key light, which we will talk about in detail later in this tutorial. I also want to mention that for better keying, the image has to be more sharp in 4K without the areas being out of focus because it does affect the edges. And if it is possible, there should be no reflections, no glares of sound, no changes of color, and so on, and much more. Such challenging parts you have to fix by using additional effects like rotoscoping and so forth in order to make it even more perfect. Such challenging shots that I have showed you can only be received from a low budget films where the finances were not provided to prepare the set for the post or if the unplanned decision was made after their shooting. Normally these shots are prepared beforehand and if the background needs to be removed the backdrop or the studio is being used which is illuminated professionally in order to allow the better keying in post-production. Now the backdrop or the studio can be 100% white or 100% black but the subject needs to be under the 100% kind of creating an imitation of the strong contrast of brightness in order to allow the easier isolation of the object in post-production later or instead of black and white the color can be used and commonly used color is green or blue the reason why the blue or green colors are used is because they are less present in the skin tone of the human and the most of the environment therefore creating a strong contrasting color between the subject that we're filming and the backdrop color that we have on set. Here's the visual example with the green screen. If we look at this image in the red color channel, we will see the background being black, which indicates that it has got no red color in it at all. However, red color is present on our subject's skin. Similar with the blue color, there is a lot less of it on the skin though, but more on clothes. The background is seen bright only in a green color channel. Therefore, by keying that tone of green, we will be able to remove the background and isolate the subject. Of course, there are different scenarios that might require different preparation, on set but in our example we're going to use a green screen color but before we continue I have to mention one more important thing before you work with colors uh, especially in this case a green screen removal uh, you need to know how to work with different color bit depth I advise you to check my previous lesson and then come back and now let's go and remove the green screen choose an effect called key light and apply same as with color key effect we have to use the eyedropper to pick a screen color that we need to remove and if the green screen was well prepared during the production it might be enough to get a decent key key light effect has got a lot of settings which i advise you to play around with and see how they affect the green screen removal however i am going to mention the main ones only now we can view our keying process in different ways by choosing one of the options from the drop down menu in order to see what we're keying and how well we're removing the green screen select status any kind of words is similar to an alpha channel but it is a little more enhanced if you don't know what the alpha channel is and how it works i advise you to go to my youtube channel and watch the video everything you need to know about alpha channel now let's come back in status view anything that is white is revealed and opaque anything that is black is transparent will be removed and and gray is semi-transparent so our goal is to make our main subject completely white and the background completely black to do that we have to control the settings under the screen mat which are called clip black and clip white by raising the blacks we remove the gray semi-transparent areas from the black background and by lowering the whites we remove the gray semi-transparent areas from the white subject and it is okay for some slight gray being present on the edges of the subject because it works as a transition between the background and the foreground and then see how it finally looks but change the view to intermediate result rather than final result because it doesn't change original colors of the image by being pre-multiplied and you will notice that we still have some green color that spills onto our subject from the green background environment to remove it apply an effect called advanced spill suppressor then choose an ultra method as it allows to select the specific tone of green from our background which then will be used by the effect in order to bring out the natural color on our subject and remove the green spill Ultra method also allows you to have more control over the effect in case some manual adjustments are required. Like in our case, we need to increase the spill range. We did remove the green spill, but we still have some noisy and rough edges around the subject. To reduce and soften them up, apply an effect called Key Cleaner, but put it before the Spill Suppressor effect. And if you have to, adjust the settings accordingly in order to increase or decrease an effect until you are satisfied with the results. It might seem enough, but if we introduce the new background, we will still see some imperfections on our subject's edges, like these white and dark edge lines, which we can solve by using the Refine Hard Mat effect. This effect allows you to reduce the edges by using the shift edge controls, but it takes out more than we need, so put it to zero. We also don't need the feather as we already softened the edges with the key cleaner effect. Reduced shadow is only required when there are dancing shadow artifacts around the edges. In our cases, there are none, so keep it at zero. Contrast will not work as we reduced all other controls. You can keep the motion blur if there is a lot of it in the scene, or if it is not required, remove it. But we need the edge color decontamination effect, which takes the color from the inside of the subject and extends 
extends it outwards in order to fill in the transparent parts of the edges in our subject's mat, which is very similar to how it is done in separate alpha. You can also manually control the strength of this effect. We have a decent cane now, but keep in mind that each shot is different with its own challenges, therefore you might require to use more controls and techniques. Now we know how to remove the green screen. However, the key light effect can also be used with other colors, not necessarily green. So we can use it instead of the color key effect for more complex and challenging shots. So before you decide to isolate the subject in the scene by using the rotoscoping technique, I would first advise you to see and try if you can achieve the same result by using the luma or color key. Of course, sometimes the scene will not allow you to remove the object completely, but it will remove the major parts and you can finish the rest with rotoscoping. There are more effects that might be helpful in extra various challenging situations there, as well as these strategies in order to improve the keying technique. I have showed you a simple and well-prepared example. If you would like to learn more tips and tricks for advanced and challenging keying, then like, share, comment and subscribe. Also, if you don't want to miss any of the videos and be notified when they come out, then click that uh, notification bell next to the subscription button. So as always, thank you for your patience and see you in the next lessons.